Welcome to episode 52 of Sport SA Daily Diary. Today we turn to South African short distance, middle distance and marathon runner, Renee Colmer. Renee, how are you doing today? I'm very good. Went out for my first run in a very long time, so all good and all smiles. Um, yeah, I also went out this morning. It's amazing how clean the air is in Joburg. Uh, it was sure, it was like running in the in the mountains. Um, yes, and it was lovely to spot so many people out there this morning. It was good to see some familiar faces, but also some new faces out there. Yeah, and everybody was very friendly. I think they were all uh, just so grateful for seeing other people other than their spouses <laughs> or family or whoever they'd been uh, in lockdown with. No, definitely. Um, Rena, you've had a, a long and distinguished running career. Um, I believe you started running at the age of 10 when you got told by a teacher, go for a run, uh, you don't have a choice. Um, yes, it was pretty much like that. Like the teacher told the whole school to basically go and run cross country the next day in order to get points for um, the school. So, yeah, I went home and told my parents, um, your friend Maggie said we must run tomorrow. And, yeah, that's how it all started. And I am not natural at all. I finished 40 seconds, but I absolutely loved it. And uh, my mom was so proud of me and my brother that she bought us each uh, one litre of Coke because she's very <laughs> thirsty of two kilometres cross country. Uh, that is brilliant. <laughs> um, and tell me, you obviously carried on from school and, and went from there. Did uh, When did you start sort of improving and uh, seeing that this might be a, a potential career for you? Um, yes, I think from there, I just fell in love with running. And then especially when um, I saw and experienced that with hard training that you can improve. Mm. So from there, I had small goals like making the cross-country B team. Um, very excited about my first medal ever. And if I look back now, it's definitely the ugliest one. But um, yeah, I walked with it in my pocket, very proud for more than two weeks to show and tell everyone. And um, I think I made my first breakthrough only in high school. And even, even my first year in high school in grade eight, um, I battled um, to make the athletic team. I actually had to go and run um, under 19 because no under 19s wanted to run. And that's the only way I could make the team. But then, um, yeah, um, I trained throughout the cross country season. And um, yeah, the next year, um, I actually was number one in the school. And I also won essays that year. So that just, I think from a young age, I realized that with hard work and dedication, you get rewarded. And uh, tell me about running so, or winning essays at such a young age. I mean, that must have been a real uh, moment to remember. Um, yes, I definitely remember. It was um, in Kronstadt. Um, my mom took me down to Kronstadt to go and compete in um, my first essay championship. But, um, yeah, I think, I think the secret with my success is definitely the support of my parents. Like, they've mm -hmm. always been there. Supporting us. Um, my dad um, didn't have a clue about running, so he, none of my parents interfered, which I was really grateful for. And I think that that's really the secret um, to my success. And even now, after a good or a bad race, my mom is the first person I call. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely to have, have them there still. Um, Rene, you've um, run an array of races from 800, 1500, 3000, all the way up to marathon. Um, you don't often get athletes that are, are so diverse. Um, yes, I think um, like with the, I think in my heart I'll always be a track runner, and um, especially now focusing on the marathon, I still enjoy my um, track workouts. But um, yeah, my coach always believes that um, if your um, endurance is good enough, um, your speed will also be there. So you have to be fit enough. Um, in order to kick with a race. So, um, yeah, I've been very fortunate to won essays in the 800 meter, 1500, 5000 cross country, 10k half marathon. It's just the uh, marathon title that's still missing. That must be some record, though. There can't be too many people that have done that. Um, I think 
think maybe maybe Sonia Laxton and um, then um, Ilana Mayer, of course. I'm just not sure, yeah, about the 800 meter times. But yeah, um, I think like with maybe Sonia and um, Ilana. And um, is there any uh, sort of inclination or, or wish to go further than the marathon? Um, last year, I ran my first ultra. I did the Two Oceans uh, Marathon. So, and um, I finished 11th. Um, but yeah, that was also coming back from injury and stuff. So I did that with very little training. So I think that's definitely um, I want to go into um, in the future when we're allowed back running. Um, I was also planning to run Oceans this year. But um, yeah, um, what I enjoy about the marathons and especially the ultra marathons is just totally different. It's not like the gun goes off and you boom, you have to eat your faces. Yeah. You actually chat to the person next to you, watch your goal, and everybody is much more relaxed. And that's, that's what I enjoy a, about the ultras. So are you starting to enjoy those longer distances more now? Um, I presume when you were younger, you sort of loved the speed and uh, uh, the excitement of the shorter distances. Is it the longer ones you are preferring now? Um, yes, I think also um, with the situation that I'm in at the moment, I'm not um, a full-time athlete anymore. I'm working. I also have a family. I've got a young daughter, Carly. So I'm focusing just on getting a run done. And um, that's yeah. what's the main goal at the moment. So um, that's what I also enjoy about the longest stuff. You don't have to be too worried and, and concerned about hitting the paces on the track all the time. You just need to get time on the legs in. Uh, Rena, just taking you back a little bit again. Uh, in 1997, you uh, won bronze in the 1500 and the 3000 at the Africa Junior Athletics Champs. Was that your first big breakthrough in terms of I've now arrived on the scene? I must say, I didn't really um, realize that at the moment, but I think uh, maybe yes, because that was the African Junior Championships in Nigeria. And um, I finished third behind a Kenyan and Ethiopian. So I think that that's really was one of my breakthroughs. And then I also participated. Um, I think thinking back, my biggest breakthrough as a junior was um, in 1990. Now I must think um, seven. Yes, in 1997 was competing at the World Cross Country Championships in um, Turin. And there I finished 12 in the junior race. I think that was really um, my big breakthrough and thinking, yo, you can um, make this um, or yo, you can go further with your running. So that was, yeah, I think that was just the motivation for going so further. And you certainly went further. Uh, in 2001, you represented SA at uh, the World Champs. Uh, 2008, obviously, the Olympics uh, in Beijing, which was uh, special for you because that was 1,500 meters. Uh, again, world champs in 2011, back to Olympics, but this time for the marathon in 2012. So you've had a really diverse sort of running career. Um, again, there can't be too many people that have gone to the Olympics and done the 1,500 and then in other Olympics done the marathon. Uh, yeah, that's very yeah. rare. But yeah, <laughs> it was quite a big jump going from 1500 to, to the marathon. But also, yeah, the, the reason behind that was um, being a track athlete, you must be away home so long. You basically have to spend the whole European summer in Europe competing and chasing qualifying times. And um, that's when I moved over to the marathon. That's something I really enjoyed, like just focusing on one race, go overseas for that race. And then I always um, used to spoil myself with a post-marathon um, holiday afterwards. So, uh, yeah, that's, that was the idea with going um, over to the marathon. Okay. And uh, obviously going to the Olympics, the two different ones, um, Beijing and London, two very different countries, two very different Olympics. Um, did you have any heroes that you kind of – sought out to go and uh, look for at the Olympics, like you, Usain Bolt or anybody? Because it is amazing how all the athletes, no matter what sport you do or where you're from, you're all together and you're all kind of the same. Um, I think that that's what's really um, special about staying in the Olympic Village with 10,000 other athletes. It's just like 
bumping into all these athletes standing behind um, Docker Vich in the food queue and stuff like that. And it's very hard um, to just contain yourself and pretend that you're used to all of this. Um, so, yeah, like in the past, I've watched soccer with Hussein. Um, I've shared a um, dinner table with Mo Faro. So, um, yeah, it's now looking back at all these special memories. I'm really grateful for that. And do you get awestruck in terms of when you are with those as athletes? Do you see some of the athletes that are less well-known sort of trying to get um, selfies with, with the high-profile guys? Or is it very relaxed and it's just sort of a chilled, everybody's the same environment? I mean, it's pretty much very chilled. But I must say, um, the guys are also very relaxed and they're all, always keen um, for, for a photo or a selfie and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Trying to think what selfies I do do have. I need to go back into my photo library. But yeah, that's really special memories to look back on. And especially in the situation that we are in the moment, um, I have new um, gratitude for um, sport and how sport, my running allowed me to um, travel the world and also to meet all these fabulous people. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, I think of the situation that we find ourselves in over the last six weeks or so, I think it's really come to the fore, the importance of sport, not only from watching it live, but from participating and just being being involved and being active. Yes, and I also think it's just a great way um, mentally. I can just feel the whole mood in our house. This morning is different. Um, after my husband and I went for a run, so i um, yeah, it's just like you've got new energy, um, you're excited for the day, so. Yeah, and then Rene, in 2009, you, you won the Soweto Marathon. That must have been a, uh, something to savor and something to rem uh, remember. I've done the, the half marathon at Soweto a couple of times and running through the township, it is actually quite amazing. And that's definitely one one of the highlights of my um, running career was winning the Soweto Marathon in 2009. Um, and you have to run it and experience um, to believe it. But um, that's why they call it the people's race. Um, it was just fantastic running down the streets of Soweto. Um, everybody coming out to support um, ladies in their gowns. Um, other guys connecting host pipes to give you water and then just um, the small kids handing out water sachets and yeah you know, that was that's really a special memory that I'll definitely treasure forever. Yeah I'm sure and Renee you, you said you went for a run with uh, your husband this morning is he able to keep up with you? Um, I went first because I'm a morning morning person, so I booked the first slot, and then um, yeah, he looked after um, Carly, our free old, and then when I came back, um, he went out. But yeah, I must confess, our pace was pretty much similar because um, I actually haven't run in a very long time. I had a hip operation in February. So I just got the green light to run just before the lockdown. So I actually had one run before the lockdown, <laughs> an extra five weeks of no running. I attempted uh, running around the garden a bit, but yeah, um, that wasn't too wise, especially coming from a hip hop. Yeah, so I was, yeah, I was huffing and puffing, to be honest, this morning, and it was not from breathing through the buff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tell me, Renee, you also run with your sister, Christine. Is there a bit of uh, competition between the two of you? Uh, no, I don't really think so. Um, I'm very fortunate to be training or to have a um, sister that's not only my best friend, but also a training partner. And I think the age gap between us is five years. So I think that's that, um, it's big enough that we're not in constant competition, but we're actually... Um, supporting each other and yeah I feel sorry for Christine because um, she grew up thinking that's what you have to do in this family you have to run and yeah. um, um, 30 what 34 years later she's still running so yeah um, it's very special um, to train with her and also to travel um, abroad and do races together so I'm very lucky to have her. Yes, it is a very special bond. Uh, I've got two friends who are brothers and 
they ride together and that's the, the one common denominator that they have. And I mean, they now the oldest um, uh, partnership in the EPSA Cape Epic in terms of age, and they just love that time together. Uh, yeah. Rene, you now coaching girls at the same time. What is the sort of most important lesson that you try and uh, um, get through to them in terms of uh, running and, and possible careers? Um, yes, I'm not really coaching um, the girls at the Four and Two Running Academy, but I'm more of a mentor to them. So we've got weekly sessions where we'll do some um, core exercises. And for me, that's just a way to bond with them and to win their trust. And um, yeah, they, then I must give them um, career guidance, what to do after school, and also um, tell them that um, being a runner can open a lot of opportunities for you, but um, you also need to look at, at your academics in order to get those opportunities. And um, yeah, I think a very important thing that I try to emphasize emphasize with them is that you can't just rely on your running it offers you a lot of opportunities but you have to use those opportunities in your advantage yeah and uh, Rene just in closing um, you've had as I mentioned earlier a very long and distinguished career is there any moment that stands out as that was my moment that was something I will remember for the rest of my life um, I think it was definitely qualifying for the Olympic Games in 2008. Um, it's something I started dreaming of when I was um, 11 years old, and that was after Elana Meyer won the silver medal in Barcelona in the 10,000 meter behind the Arte Tulu. So mm. that, that's where that seed was planted in my heart. And yeah, 16 years later, that dream. Um, became a reality and it wasn't it wasn't easy like um, I missed the 2004 Olympics with a couple of seconds like I think with two seconds or so so that was really hard to swallow and even a world champs with half a second so um, basically I had to train for 10 years to improve two seconds and I'm um, thinking back there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but they were definitely worth it. So um, the qualifying for the 2008 Olympics was my career highlight. Yeah. And sorry, just lastly, you, you've uh, mentioned uh, Zola Bud and Alana Mayer um, a bit. Have you ever had the opportunity of running with them? Yes. Um, I've been very lucky um, where as a junior making the world cross country teams, um, Zola Budgets love cross country teams. So we made made a lot of um, teams together. Yeah, and um, she's just such such a special such a special person. I've learned a lot from her. And I also um, stayed in Bloemfontein for two years, where I would often go and visit visit Zola. So um, I'm very lucky to co to call my um, heroes, my friends as well. Also been yeah. very lucky to go for a run with Yolana, and uh, once I bumped into a running in Stellenbosch, and it was so funny. We were actually fitted out in the exact same Adidas running gear. So yeah, that's really. I'm really fortunate that I can call my two sporting heroes my friends. Yeah, that is uh, something that's very lucky, and and uh, very rare to be quite honest. Yes, and. So yeah. Help me to uh, with one of the verticals um, to get her abroad to go and study in the US. So I think there's really okay. a special bond and relationship there and understanding there. Yeah. Rena, it's been lovely chatting to you today on Sport SA Daily Diary. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, enjoy uh, getting out and doing a couple more runs and good luck with the hip. I hope it recovers well. Yes, thanks. I think it was actually good this five week lockdown. It was force myself to heal and recover properly and just to focus on the rehab exercises. Yeah, I've heard that uh, from a few athletes. It's actually been good for their, their bodies to recover. But take care and we'll see you at the Two Oceans next year. Yes, thanks a lot for the chat. Speak soon. Take care. Cheers. Catch us again tomorrow on Sport SA Daily Diary where we'll be chatting to the race director of the Freedom Challenge, Chris Fisher. Chris Fisher.